Hello and welcome to another edition of Crosshairs. My name is Randolph Ramsey. And can you smell that, guys? It's the smell of love because this is Crosshairs' very special Valentine's Day edition. Laura Parker, <laughs> Dan Gavini, can you smell it as Should well? We <laughs> is it something else? I, I was too polite to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's love, Randy. I'm pretty, I thought it was love when. But it's over now. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, we are. This is our special Valentine's Day edition. There's going to be a bit of romance in the air, but we're also going to be looking at games. Dan, tell us what's on the show today, man. Look, we really classed it up this week. This week we've got, we're going to beat the crap out of each other in <laughs> UFC, uh, which is not so Valentine's Day themed. We're also going to take a look at Vin Diesel, and not actually at Vin Diesel. We're going to take a look at uh, the new Chronicles of Riddick game, uh, Dark Athena, I think it is, Assault on Dark Athena. We've got uh, global domination in Empire Total War, and we've also got the developers of the game, Aussies, I believe, mm -hmm. and we've got much, much more. Plus, Laura is going to run us through some love advice. Hi, guys, and welcome to Ask Laura. Mr. Lonely Heart asks, Dear Laura, I met a girl a month ago in the city, and we exchanged emails and phone numbers. We talk every day. I've never found a girl who could put up with me so well. We have talked about getting together one day. The problem is that she's 15 and I'm 20. We don't know how to ask each other out and we're scared about what her parents will say. I'm thinking if all goes well when we meet up again, I will ask her out. Do you have any advice for me? Okay, Mr. Lonely Hearts, this is a tough one. Apart from the fact that what you're doing is technically illegal, most people will frown upon the age gap between you and your girlfriend. Now, if it was the other way around and she was 20 and you were 15, I'm sure not everybody would have a problem with it, but you have to keep that in mind. Don't let the age gap put you off. If there is a real connection between the two of you and you feel that you're both mature enough to engage in a relationship, then go for it. But make sure you check if her dad has a gun because if she does, you might want to run away. Okay, so that was first advice from Laura on love. But she doesn't just know the matters of the heart. She also knows a bit about game news. <laughs> Laura, can you tell us the big news that's happened in games over the past week? Yes, not love related just yet. Um, so <laughs> let's begin with some classification news first up. Uh, last week, the South Australian Attorney General Michael Atkinson did reveal to us that he may not be the only classification minister who opposes RET. We tracked everybody down to see what they thought, and by everybody I mean the other Attorney Generals. And not surprisingly, none admitted to supporting Atkinson, although Victoria and ACT said they did support the RET classification, while the rest said they have no position on the issue and they're just waiting on the release of the discussion paper. On to some sales figures. Sony has revealed that they've sold 213,000 PS3s in Australia just last year with a total install base of 460,000 units. That of course includes the 70,000 consoles that Sony gave away during its Bravia promotion. And by comparison, Microsoft and Nintendo have sold more than 537,000 and 1 million units of their consoles respectively in Australia. Still with Sony, at a press conference in Japan, Sony revealed that 24 developers and publishers have signed on to create content for its virtual world home. These include Activision, Konami, Capcom, Sega, and Ubisoft and EA. On to game news, Capcom has confirmed that it will be developing Dead Rising 2 for the PC, 360 and PS3. No release date as yet, but the trailer on YouTube shows the game is set in a Las Vegas type city several years after the first game. Exciting news for all you gangsters out there who like to keep it real. Uh, everybody's favourite rapper Snoop Dogg has just announced a deal with MTV which will see him appearing in Rock Band very soon. No specific songs were mentioned as yet, but it's come to light that a selection of his great hits will be included. And finally, if you thought mod chipping was legal in Australia, then you're in for a root shock. Uh, we've looked at mod chipping exclusively in the second part of our piracy feature, which is now live on the GameSpot AU site, so check it out. And that's it for all this week's news on Crosshairs. Mr. Freak 666 asks, Dear Laura, why aren't girls impressed with my kill death ratio of 4 to 1? Mr. Freak, this is a very silly question. It's because it's not badass enough. Hello? It's sales charts time again for the week of January 26 to February 1 according to GFK Australia. 
Coming in at this week's number 10, it's more brain training from Dr. Kawashima. How old is your brain on the Nintendo DS? Number 9, Skate 2 on the 360. Number 8, SingStar ABBA. Number 7, Super Smash Bros. Brawl on the Wii. Number 6, Guitar Hero World Tour Super Bundle on the 360. Number 5, Top Spin 3 on the Wii. This week's number 4, Guitar Hero World Tour Super Bundle on the Wii. Number 3, Dr. Kawashima's Brain Training, How Old Is Your Brain on the DS. Number 2, Mario Kart Wii on the Wii. And this week's number 1, it's Wii Fit on the Wii. Rating Swatch time again this week, and the following titles have been rated by the Classification Board of Australia. Pokey fans will be happy to know that Pokemon Platinum DS, the new Pokey title which reuses characters and settings from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, has been given a PG rating. It doesn't have a confirmed Aussie release date as yet, but it's due out in North America in March this year. Storm Rise, the Aussie developed post apocalyptic real world strategy game from the makers of Total War, will be coming to the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 and PC, and has been given an M rating. It'll be out here on March 26th. And lastly, if you're a fan of grabbing hold of your stick and taking to the skies to reenact classic dogfights from World War II, transmission developed game Heroes Over Europe will be right up your alley. Due out April 2nd, it'll be hitting the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and PC, and it has been rated PG. Mr. Streak 000 asks, Dear Laura, I would like to hear your views on office romances. Recently at work, I've become aware that a certain girl is staring at me all the time. I must admit, it does flatter me, but it also makes me a little uncomfortable. This has been going on for quite a few weeks now and is starting to annoy me. Since I'm usually bored, asking this girl out isn't such a bad idea, but talking to her is now awkward. My last office romance caused some problems. We got busted kissing in the conference room by the HR manager. Then we broke up and she never came back to work. And since times are tough and all, I really don't want to drive this girl away from the office place. But she flatters me. What should I do, Laura? Hmm. My advice is that office romances never end well, okay? So steer clear from her. I know you're bored, but do you really want to start a relationship with a girl that if you break up with, you will have to be face every single day in the office? In cases like that, when she's staring at you, you can say bugger off or just pull her aside nicely and say, look, what you're doing doesn't make me comfortable. Make sure you do it in a joking way so she's not embarrassed. Keeping with the love theme for this episode, we've brought on possibly the most romantic man alive, Mr. James Kozanecki. G'day, James. Hey, Randy. How's it going? Good to see you dressed up for today, too, mate. Yeah, we're... as always, man. I like to keep up appearances. And we're all in, we're all in very swish jackets today, aren't we? It's classy as f***. Yeah, <laughs> okay, hopefully we can bleep that out later, but this is going to be our, um, this is going to be our preview section now. We're going to talk about three games today. One is Chronicles of Riddick, Assault and Dark Athena. We're also going to be talking about UFC Undisputed 2009, and finally Empire Total War. But we're going to start with a bit of Riddick, a bit of Vin Diesel action, because you've managed to have some hands-on time with the 360 version, yeah? I have, yeah. Um, I'm not entirely sure where it's set in the Riddick universe, but you're... Basically, you're floating in a ship with a guy, another mercenary called John, when you get captured by a mercenary ship called the Dark Athena, which is a pirate ship, and they're trying to claim their bounty on you. So what they do is they, they bring you in, and Riddick manages to, manages to escape being captured, while John gets taken into the, into the prison area of the ship, and Riddick just goes postal and stabbing dudes with... He still Shivs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, there's a there's a so, a so it's a prison ship, right? Yes, mm -hmm. and there's a the main prison warden is this chick with a hairpin, and he steals it and just goes around stabbing people with that. Don't tell me the main weapon in this game is a hairpin. <laughs> yeah, for most of it. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's drones in there as well, and you can yeah. pick up the drone guns. But to pick up the drone guns, you actually have to hold the drone himself. Mm. So it's not the most maneuverable weapon, and he can you go really slowly with it. So, mm. but it's a first-person shooter, right? It is, yeah. But to do actions like. Um, jumping up over a ledge or climbing a ladder it goes into third person. Sort of like what Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway did. Now surely there's more than just the uh, the pin. What other weapons have you seen <coughs> so far? Um, well there was a shotgun as well as a submachine gun and an assault rifle that I got to use. Oh and uh, like a combat knife that you could stab people with and two sort of like 
I had nunchuck blades, which are pretty sweet. Okay, so like, what did you actually play, Cos? How many levels of the game did you actually get to get your hands on? Uh, it would have been about the first hour of it, so what I did was, after I escaped, I managed to get some weapons, and then I made it my way through the crew quarters and through a, a, a cargo area of, of the ship. What about the controls themselves? I mean, it's a console shooter. How's yeah. it run? Uh, fairly standard. Right trigger is to shoot, um, left trigger is to block, square is to reload. And that's about all you need to know, really. And I saw this weird kind of sci-fi darkness mode thing you had going. What was that? Yeah, basically, the game it uses a bit, uh, bit of stealth. So if, in order to tell where you're in the shadows, you bring down uh, the little goggles that he's got. And it sort of changes around all the colors to, to like shades of blue. And the bluer something is, the, the more hidden you are in it. OK, so the last Riddick game was really well received. I think Starbreeze did that one as well, right? And there was a lot of people who actually, um, I, I guess, gave it a lot of plaudits for the way it looked. Does this one look just as good? or? It looks all right. I mean, it's pre-development code that we've seen. So it, it could do with a bit of polish around the sides. But on the whole, it is very sharp looking. OK, when is it out? Uh, it's out on March. All right, so that is it for Assault on Dark Athena. Look out for it when it comes out on the 360 and PS3, I think, right, Coz? Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on, on to UFC 2009 Undisputed now. Now, this game is from the same people who bought us all the uh, WWE SmackDown vs. Raw. Ukes, a uh, Japanese developer. So uh, we actually got to uh, get some hands-on time with the 360 build of it. Coz and I went through a few rounds, and I basically went them all, right, Coz? Yeah, uh, except for all the other ones that uh, I won. Okay, <laughs> all right. But um, if you've seen some footage of UFC in the past, you'll know that this game looks absolutely stunning. Now, Coz, as I said, you and I played it. What, did you think it actually looked as good, like, in, in the flesh, as, as, as you've seen in the trailers? It, it did, yeah. I mean, you are punching people and there'd be sweat flying off them. If you got a really good blow to the jaw, um, the mouth guard would fall out of them and there's a bit of blood there as well. Mm. And realistic body hair too. So like these hairy dudes in the <laughs> UFC ring, it sort of looks kind of freaky. But They haven't know. waxed in a while, that's for sure. Yeah, well, you know, they're fighters, not lovers. So, <laughs> yeah. So how many fighters are in this game? There's going to be about 80, I believe. There's going to be 80 games in there. Now, I'm not, I've got to be honest, I'm not a big um, Ultimate Fighting Championship fan, so I'll just list out some of the names, some of the big names that are in there, apparently, because I don't really know these guys. <laughs> uh, people like Forrest Griffin, Quinton Rampage Jackson, Chuck Liddell, BJ Penn, Anderson Silva, Michael Bisping, Roger Huerta, Matt Hughes, Wanderlei Silva, that's a great name, Wanderlei. Brock Lesnar, who I did know from his WWE days, and heaps, heaps more. I think we played a couple of matches with Brock Lesnar. Yeah, and um, the rampaging dude. Yeah, the rampaging dude. And yeah, you, you did beat me quite a lot. Because the controls are very different to what you'd be used to if you've played any of the Ukes uh, sort of wrestling type titles. Uh, all your limbs are basically, each of your different limbs are mapped to a different uh, button on the control pad. Oh, that's cool. And you have modifiers. Uh, left trigger, I think, if you hold that down, will change it from a high from a high blow to a low blow. Yep. And if you hold down right trigger, you'll do one of his special moves. So there was one sort of like lunging punch that you could land from about halfway across the ring. Flying kick. Yeah, flying kicks. And if you land these super... Um, kicks basically, you know, you can you got a real good chance of you know knocking someone down, not necessarily out because UFC isn't about sort of one hit punches. Like sometimes it does happen, but a lot of it also happens on submission. the mat. Yeah, submission t style stuff. And cause you could probably go on a little bit more about this. Um, the, I thought the interesting thing about this game was it sort of felt like two different fighting systems in the game. There was you stand up fighting, and then if you get kicked to the ground, you sort of it gives you a different sort of control scheme where hmm. you, you defend at first, but if someone gets on top of you and holds you down, they're either going to put you in a submission where you've got to use the right analog stick to get out of, yeah. or they're just going to pummel your face. So you've got to either try and counter that or pummel them back. Yeah. Is it quick style, uh, quick event style, no. get out? With Not Steve? at all. It's whatever, it's button mashing essentially. It, it, it's actually a little bit Street Fighter in that, okay, so you initiate a grapple by moving to someone and then I think pushing the right stick towards them. And if you manage to get them on the ground, then you basically use the right stick to do sort of quarter circles, half circles, to try and position your body into, the, into your, your best attacking sort of stance. So if you're trying to get, let's say, on top of them on the side to get an arm bar, you'd rotate it to you know, the, the left or mm -hmm. the right. And if you're the person on the ground, then you've got to try and counter that by moving the stick in the opposite direction. 
So it's a little bit, um, I guess, unusual to try and get your head around because you know when you first see it, you're not quite sure exactly what you're doing. So Coz's and I's very early matches did devolve into a bit of, oh, we've got, we've <laughs> yeah. just got to flail around on this. I think you press the pause button by accident. <laughs> yeah, because you're, you know, you're madly going around on, on the stick, but it, it, it's got a bit of depth, it seems like, this system. I'm, bear in mind, we only played it for maybe an hour, yeah, if most. that. So there's, there's going to be a lot more, I guess, uh, nuance uh, to the system. What about the single player? We've talked a little bit about you guys fighting each other. What about the single player campaign? Coz? Um, well, basically, there's a creator, like, go. Uh, previous wrestling games have had, you can create your own fighter. And there's six different uh, fighting techniques, and they divided three of them are uh, um, like stand-up fighting techniques, while the other three are ground fighting techniques. Just quickly before we move on to our next game, I guess one of the best things about this um, the game personally for me is the looks aren't just there for, uh, or just for looks sake. Basically, there is no real sort of health damage mm. bar to this, so you will have to look at the damage being done in real time to your opponent to see where you should be hitting, whether they're about to go down. I mean, it was really impressive. Um, you hit someone in the sort of ribs enough Get him in, in the, the game, up. and it starts bruising up. You mm. can start seeing purple, and you go, OK, I, that's a real sore point for them. I need to keep going there. Just work the kidneys a little bit, and they'll be pissing <laughs> blood for a week. And this is our special Valentine's Day episode, <laughs> kids. Okay, so what's this one out? Cos? Uh, this is out at the end of May. Okay, the final game that we're doing today is Empire Total War. This one's being done by Creative Assembly, not in Brisbane, unfortunately, because I think they're doing Stormrise. So Creative Assembly in the UK is doing the next in the Total War series. Once again, Cos and I managed to get some hands-on time, or Cos mainly, because you're, you're the big Total War fan in the yeah, office, I've, yeah? I've played a few more of them, a little bit more than you have, I think. Let's start with when this game is actually set, mate. All right, so it's set between the 1700s uh, and the 1800s, so Gunpowder has just been invented. They're still learning uh, infantry tactics to use weapons, but they've still got swords and horses. Swords and horses. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you can't go wrong with that, swords and horses. Okay, and big new additions for this game basically are naval battles. Uh, guns and a better strategic map. I'm going to bring you in the conversation here a little bit because I know that you actually played some of the naval battles in no, last I did, year's I E3. No, I didn't yeah. play it, but I saw it running last year. Ah, E3. okay, all right. Because we actually got to see um, naval battles this time around. We didn't get to play naval battles, and it does look good, doesn't it? Like it the looked awesome. The the wash of the, the mm. water up against the hull of the ships, uh, the sharks mm. in the water there, and um, taking out other ships with the. I can't remember what the shop was called, but you could destroy their... A um, grape shop? Is it no, grape shop? Uh, I think uh, there was a broad shot, which mm -hmm. is where if you get your right hi uh, the right side of your ship mm -hmm. up against the other side, all the cannons That's on the right side. side. You yeah, can just destroy all their masts and they yeah. sit out there and float and they can't really move around. And yeah. the rocket ship! Yeah, the ro yeah that was That's cool. That's awesome. Okay, and uh, the ships do look great because, like, you know, you can see all of the individual sort of crew members. And apparently, if your crew member does die, and if he's like a gunner or something, that's one less gun that your ship won't have. So once again, the attention to detail in Turtle War is is once again skyrocketed. Uh, guns, guns are the new addition for this one because in the previous one, it's all been uh, you know just projectile sticks. weapons, yeah, Ooh, sticks yeah. basically. Sticks. <laughs> but seeing as if you know guns in this era, 1700 to 1800, weren't really that advanced, it still it, it doesn't really change things that much, does it? No, I mean it, there was the initial volley of fire that the guys could lay down, but afterwards you'd see them like put their gun on the ground, they'd be sort of sticking the gunpowder through it, and then it'd take a little while before they could do it before they could fire again, but the cool thing was they had on the old school Gatling gun where I was just cranking, <laughs> and you see the guys going, well, yeah. so, so the fact that you can't go auto, how does that change gameplay in terms of formation? How important does that become? Um, well, you've got, you've really got to like have two people, behind, like one, while well, one person's reloading, you want to have someone who's able to defend them or like, okay, so while they're reloading, they're going to be quite defenseless. So what you want to do is you want to have horses on the right or left of them so that if something does happen and the computer often tries to outflank you, they can jump in, take over the flight while they reload and, and get back in. Strategy still is probably essentially the same as you would have had in the last few sort of Empire Total Wars. You still need cavalry, you still need infantry. You can't just sort of stand back and, you know, stand and deliver type tactics, even though there's guns in it now. So, because you actually played this, how did it actually control for you? Um, if you've played previous Total War games, you'll feel at home. Um, there's similar sort of formation tactics that you can use, as well as um, artillery practically hasn't changed. It still takes a little while to, to reload. Um, the cool thing with the gun guys is if they are taking too long, is you can put bayonets on them, or on the guns rather, and they can bayonet charge, so it's pretty similar like that. Okay, still a lot of depth in Empire Total War, look out for it, cause when is it actually out? It's out in mid-March. 
speaking of Empire Total War, I caught up with Mark O'Connell, who's the marketing director on the game, and here's what he has to say. Hi, I'm James from GameSpot.au, and I'm here with Mark O'Connell from Creative Assembly. How are you? I'm very good today. How are you? Good, thanks. Now we're here to chat to you about Empire Total War. You guys have been in beta for a little while with that. What have you guys learned from that? Um, from people playing the game so far, um, first of all, the reaction has been really positive. Um, we're really excited about um, how they've played the naval battles too. They've got straight into it. We've made the, the controls very intuitive, so if you're very familiar with the land battles, you can get straight in there and get to grips with the naval campaign, naval battles rather, very quickly. What exactly are you doing to make this game more newcomer friendly? Okay, um, one of the main things we've done, we've introduced a new Road to Independence mode. Uh, so that is a very story-driven, episodic campaign. Um, so when you first start, you're going to have like a, a very small village and maybe a few troops, maybe a ship, and then you know, um, as you progress through the storyline, then you, everything's going to open up to you. So you'll get all the features of the UI, um, the technology tree, and you, know, you can start building an army and developing your farms and your towns and your ports. So that by the end of the road to independence, um, the players are completely up to speed with all the new features, and they're ready to go into the grand campaign. Okay, now weather plays a bit of a role in this game, so it could either ruin your battle plan or make it. How have you balanced out the weather so that it doesn't completely ruin the gameplay for fans, but still provides a bit of a challenge for the newcomers? Um, well, well, there's a number of things. Um, so. Uh, the weather, for example, in uh, naval battles um, is very important because you use it um, to move around. Um, but it, it would be that um, if we did it completely realistically in a naval battle, if you're sailing against the wind, you never move. So we've added a bit of leeway with that. Um, also, if you go into a, a land battle, um, the weather plays a huge factor. Um, um, it's the age of gunpowder, so it's the first time they're using guns in battle. Of course, if the gunpowder gets wet, you can have misfires and all that kind of thing. Equally, if you're, if you're fighting in hot and arid conditions, then if you fire a cannonball and you miss your target, it's going to um, hit the ground and keep bouncing off. Um, but it, it's something that it's not supposed to um, cause any hindrance to the player, but it just causes them to change their tactics and their approach to the game. Okay, cool. Now, while we're talking about guns, how different is using weapons like guns in Empire Total War to, say, the archers in medieval or Rome? Right. Um, to start with, um, the, the technology will be quite basic. They won't be as accurate. Um, you, it's a different way of thinking. Um, you know, you, you're concentrating more on um, getting your, your lines of sight and your lines of fire right and um, taking into consideration visibility and your distance from the opposition. But, of course, um, when you start developing the technology, it becomes very effective even at long range, etc. Um, but that's not to say that uh, the melee combat's not important, too. You still have cavalry in the 1800s. Um, you know, you still have sort of um, the native Indians, for example, they don't have any uh, gunpowder units or anything like that, but, you know, they're still very effective with their hands, so I mean, you need a decent range of units in order to combat that. Okay, so the uh, facing an, an enemy with guns, does that uh, demoralise your troops at all? It can do. What we actually did was um, we, we got the documents from the 1800s that uh, uh, soldiers would write actually on the field, so we found out the exact conditions that would make them lose morale. So um, we've incorporated all that kind of stuff into the game. Uh, of course, if you're um, if you're attacking the enemy, but you're also being shot from the side and you're caught in a crossfire, it's going to have a huge hit on your morale. Likewise, if your admiral or your um, general die. Okay, cool. Now let's talk a little bit about diplomacy in the game. What have you guys done to sort of build upon the diplomacy as well? Okay, um, it's a lot uh, more expanded than it ever has been in previous games. It's also a lot more consistent. It used to be that um, if you're uh, allies with, say, for example, France for 50 years, um, the next turn they could just suddenly turn on you and start attacking you, and you'd be like, what the hell, you know, we've been friends, we've got a trade alliance. That won't happen now. Um, the, throughout the entire game, your relationships will build with all the different factions, and um, based on what you do with them and what you do with their allies, it will have an effect. Also, we've made it so that um, there's a consistency between the land and the naval battles too. Um, so, for example, if you say you're uh, fighting the Spanish and um, you, you're doing pretty well, you've killed 30% of their troops, um, all of a sudden you could see that their generals ordered their men off the field and they've just retreated. You'd be like, okay, why did they do that? You know, they could still win. But then you'll go to the campaign and you'll see that, um, you know, um, that you're fighting in Europe and um, it may not be very important to them, so they've ordered their troops to go over to America, where instead of committing 30% of their troops to the battle, they'll commit 100%. So um, they'll fight tooth and nail, you know, to the last. So there's a lot more sort of fluidity and consistency now, which we've never had before. Uh, what new features have fans really been wanting for out of the game? Right, um, the biggest one has to be naval battles. It's something we've wanted to do for a long time. Um, in previous games, it's been a, you know, 
uh, uh, sort of turn basing so you just click and then based on what the stats of your ship are you'll either win or lose and um, that's not the case now we've got uh, fully 3d naval battles with realistic seascapes and um, we had one guy just working on the sea for almost a year um, so if you walk past his desk now we see him just bobbing up and down you know he gets motion sick poor guy um, the other thing is um, something we really wanted to do was a multiplayer campaign now uh, that won't be in the game when it's released but it's something we're working on um, so we're going to be releasing a beta um, you know maybe a few months after release um, so a player will be able to face another player in a, a campaign against each other or with each other. My name is Mark O'Connell and I'm the PR and online manager at the Creative Assembly. I'm here today talking about Empire Total War which is released in March 2009 for the PC. <laughs> Mr. Leo23 asks, Dear Laura, I am wondering how I can get my girlfriend into video games. Where should I start and what type of games should I play with her? Now, this is a question that I'm guessing most of you out there will want to know. And the answer is pretty simple. Now, as you know, you got to ask the girl what she likes. Does she like puzzle games? Does she like adventure games? Does she like puppies? Everybody likes puppies. Okay? So, with Nintendo's domination of the casual market, that's usually a good place to start. Pick up a DS or a Wii and get your girlfriend to game with you. If you can pick a game, something like Legend of Zelda, I'm pretty sure that's an easy one to start off with. And if she doesn't like Legend of Zelda, then she's probably not worth having as a girlfriend anyway. It's getting hot in here. I'm taking off all my clothes. But before we do get, get to that, because it is romance, right? It's romance time. It's not romantic when you do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cause is going to take us through what competitions are on GameSpot right now. What can the kids win by going to GameSpot, Cause? All right, we're giving away a copy of Street Fighter 4 thanks to the Osport, books thanks to Hatchet Publishing, and tickets to an exclusive Killzone 2 event where you can play the game before it comes out and meet the developers. And you have to be in Sydney for that, though. And where can they actually find the details for this, Cause? All you got to do is go to www.gamespot.com.au forward slash comps, and it'll have it there. OK, while you're in the uh, rant, like, saying, list-type mood, Cause, what is actually coming out in Australia this week in terms of new releases? All right, first up is Fear 2 Project Origin for the PlayStation 3, 360, and PC. Secondly is Deadly Creatures for the Wii. Destroy All Humans, Path of the Furon for PS3 and 360. Nerf and Strike for the Wii. Star Ocean Second Evolution for the PSP. Jake Power Handyman. Jake Power Policeman. And Jake Power Fireman for the DS. That's a lot of kids' games involving man. Mr. MHS Drake asks Dear Laura, is it a problem if your girlfriend is better at COD 4 than you? Mr. M.H. a streak. No, that's not a problem as long as you're not better at her at pillow fighting in your underwear. And that is it for this very special Valentine's Day edition of Crosshairs. Laura, thank you very much for your love advice. No worries, it was my pleasure. Do you actually believe your advice though, or were you just trying to... I never take my own advice. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't mean you shouldn't. Yeah, because she's totally trustworthy when it comes to romance matters. I am. Apparently. I'm totally trustworthy. Okay. I'm the love guru of this office. Apparently, okay. <laughs> so, once again, thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Happy Valentine's Day. See ya. Bye, Bye now. Guys. Oh, happy Valentine's Day! Oh, I thank you. Um, do you want to make out? Okay. Mm -hmm.